Doreen Ringer Ross from BMI, and please welcome Mark Mothersbaugh. This guy Jerry Casali and I, we started a band uh, based on de evolution because we were, you know, they shot kids at our school while we were protesting and killed them and wounded them. And we thought, this is crazy. And we were trying to describe what we saw going on around us. And we thought, well, if you can't change things by rebellion, if rebellion's obsolete, how do you change things and who does it best? And we looked at, um, Madison Avenue, we saw all the stuff they managed to make people buy happily and uh, made them believe that they really wanted it. And they, their techniques were, were scary and impressive and usually involved subversion. So we thought, well, we take that to heart. And we thought, well, where, could, where do we take that? And we thought, Hollywood. <laughs> the dark heart of America. Back then, we'd make these little films, and uh, we'd put them in. We'd just put a sheet up. We'd go play at CBGB's. We'd drive from Ohio to New York, and we'd play CBGB's for 20 bucks and sleep in our van. 1976, we finally thought, well, let's put one of them in a film festival, and we did, and, and we, uh, we got first prize for film short at Ann Arbor Film Festival for a, a, a film called The Truth About De-Evolution. It had two really strange songs in it. And because of that, um, somebody at A&M Records mistakenly thought we were going to be like the Tubes. So he, <laughs> and he had just signed them. So, so he gave us enough money to drive from Ohio to California and uh, do a showcase. And um, he didn't sign us. <laughs> but we didn't go home. Our influences were pop music, but also we were listening to music everywhere, elevators, um, TV commercials. We, we, liked, we liked films. I used to, um, my favorite films, I would put my answering machine up by the television set. So, you know, if I knew something like War of the Gargantuans or Island of Lost Souls was going to be on TV, I'd, I'd have a couple 90-minute cassette tapes ready, and I'd turn them on, and, and I'd tape my favorite movies. And, I could then go back and listen to them again, you know, and, and I only had the soundtrack, I didn't have the visuals, but, uh, you know, I think maybe that made me really pay attention to the soundtracks. Somewhere along the line, a friend of mine uh, said, do you want to score my movie? First he asked me to score his um, live show that he was doing, I think at the Roxy, it was uh, Paul Rubens. And I, I was busy with Devo. And then he said, I got a film, you want to score it? And I'm like, I'm on tour all this year with Devo. And so he made a film, uh, a Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure. And then the next year he says, well, now I'm doing a TV show. And he knew that Devo was no longer on Warner Brothers. We'd signed a bad deal with Enigma Records. And they were going bankrupt at the time. And mm -hmm. there was, everything was frozen. And so when he said, do you want to score my TV show, it sounded like a really great idea. So um, it was the first thing I ever scored. I knew nothing about it. I was pretty unprepared. I didn't go to school. So he was in New, in New York at Broadcast Arts, and they'd film something. And on Monday, they'd send it to me. Tuesday, I'd, I'd write the music. Wednesday I'd record it, and Thursday I had to mail it back to him. It was exciting, because, you know, it's like you'd see it on a Monday, and then on a Saturday it was on TV. At that point I'd done like six or eight albums, and uh, it was kind of this thing where you, you had three months to write 12 songs or 15 songs, and then you rehearsed and made some films, and then you went on tour for the rest of the year, and then you came back and you got to do 15 more songs. And this all of a sudden I was doing the same amount of music in a week is that I got to do in a year. And so I kind of got really excited about the idea of scoring. And it was kind of, you know, because they were so far away and, and it was a very atypical show, I didn't, I didn't have producers all over me or, or people that are, were fretting constantly. They were just thankful that they got any music at all back on time. So, so it was a good way to just kind of accidentally fall into the business.